Hello, this is Wesley Fryer with Moving at the Speed of Creativity, and I'd like to share a few ideas this morning with you about School 2.0 and some of the ways we need to change what we do and how we learn in schools in the 21st century. What really enthralls you? I'm not asking what interests you or what you find mildly appealing, but instead, what enthralls you? According to Dictionary.com, the word enthrall has two basic meanings. First, enthrall can mean to captivate or charm a performer whose grace, skill, and virtuosity enthrall her audiences. Second, enthrall can mean to put or hold in slavery, subjugate, to be enthralled by illusions and superstitions. Michael Goldhaber noted in his 1997 article, The Attention Economy and the Net, that a thrall is basically a slave. When someone has our complete attention and we are enthralled as we listen and watch them, Goldhaber says we have voluntarily given our minds over to that individual to direct and literally control our thoughts and our minds. The ability to enthrall an audience is challenging and difficult but success brings great power to the performer. Yesterday my family and I had the pleasure to tour the Chisholm Trail Museum in Kingfisher, Oklahoma. While at the museum I had an interesting discussion with the curator. She lamented how sometimes when school children came for a tour some of them are bored because their teacher has already told them quite a bit about the Chisholm Trail and its history related through the artifacts, photographs, and maps of the museum. This upset the curator because those students are then bored and do not pay attention during her presentations at the museum. The problem with the students in the educational setting the curator was describing was not the fact that students had too much background knowledge or schema about the subject they were studying. The problem was rooted in the pedagogical goal or instructional purpose of the curator's educational interaction with the students. Like many teachers in our classrooms today, and for over a hundred years, this teacher was trying her best to enthrall her students. She wanted their full and undivided attention, and did not tolerate any wandering minds or bored dispositions in her classroom. For over a hundred years, our educational system has been putting students in small desks in straight rows and trying to force them to remain enthralled for hours on end. As Seymour Papert notes in his excellent 1993 book, The Children's Machine, Rethinking School in the Age of the Computer, these activities of formal school are not natural. Watch a three-year-old interact with her environment and other people to see what natural learning looks like. Go into most classrooms where students are seated silently in orderly rows, listening to a teacher or professor lecture from the front of the room, and you will see what school looks like, not learning. Lecture-based learning has a time and a place, but in our 21st century schools, it is ridiculous and counterproductive to make teacher-directed instruction the centerpiece of the learning experience for students. It is impossible to enthrall all your learners all the time. If you are one of the teachers who has been trying to enthrall your students constantly and have been frustrated by this experience, today is the day to stop pursuing that educational goal all the time. Stop trying to enthrall your students, and instead, strive to engage them. This image of an old schoolhouse paddle represents the worst side of the common, coercive school culture. At the extreme, this is the message our students receive when they come into many of our classrooms. Hello, welcome to class. I don't really care what your name is. Sit down, shut up, get out your textbook, your paper and pencil, and start writing down as many notes as you can about the enthralling words I'm about to start telling you. If at some point your mind wanders and you dare to act in a way I, the teacher, perceive as off-task, I will invite you to the front of the classroom where I will publicly humiliate you and physically hurt you by paddling your delinquent behind. No one except the teacher is allowed to talk in this classroom because no one else is an expert on the subjects we are going to discuss. No one is going to ask any questions, because your job is not to think. It is to memorize and absorb material. If you have a basic human need, like a desire to get a drink of water, or 
go to the bathroom, you will have to raise your hand and get permission, because my primary function, in addition to dispensing knowledge in this classroom, is to completely control your behavior and your thinking. I will direct your learning. I am the teacher. You will sit quietly, shut up, and do as you are told, because you are here to be enthralled. You are my slave in this classroom, and that means I expect and demand your full attention. Anything less than 100% cooperation will result in your immediate physical abuse at my hand and paddle, or your expulsion from this classroom forever. Welcome to school. I'm so glad you've come to join us. Now, that image may sound a little extreme for the school where you currently work or where your own children or grandchildren attend school. But philosophically, in many classrooms, teachers have not moved very far from that approach. Many teachers are still striving to enthrall their students each day and force them to comply with their orders. This situation must change. One way you and I, as teachers in the 21st century, can change our classrooms to better meet the needs of learners in the 21st century is by striving to engage rather than enthrall them. How do we engage students? There is not a single answer to this question because our learners are all unique and different individuals. Two of the key elements to engagement in learning are choice and differentiation. When I give you real choices about the learning tasks you are going to work on during class, chances are much higher you will have more interest as well as background knowledge or schema to make those opportunities for learning meaningful and valuable to you personally. As a teacher, I cannot make you learn. If I enthrall you, perhaps I can direct your attention in meaningful ways for short periods of time, but even if I am a great performer, there are limits as to how long I can really hold your attention. Your attention may even be wandering now, watching and listening to this video. It is natural for this to happen, because we all have highly complex brains. Rather than fight against our inclinations toward natural learning, as teachers, we need to understand it and then modify our lessons to accommodate this reality. Watch a brief clip on the Cartoon Network or even a short bit of a documentary on the Discovery Channel to see how often professional television producers have to change the images, the music, the narration, and the entire multimedia experience of an engaging program to maintain the audience's attention. As a classroom teacher, you likely don't have the budget, the time, or the expertise to match the multimedia experiences of the Cartoon Network or the Discovery Channel. So why are you trying to enthrall your students for 50 minutes at a time? Stop trying to enthrall your students all the time. Differentiate learning choices and assessment options for your students. Seymour Papert notes that most schools are solely interested in helping students develop literacy rather than literacy. When a child in her school, she is often told to stop asking questions and stop directing her own learning. Now that they have started school, they will be reading about the world instead of experiencing the world in ways that are personally meaningful. Change this pattern by giving your students choices about the ways they learn material. Rather than asking them to simply learn facts, ask them to apply those facts by tackling complex questions that are worth answering. Invite students to collaborate with each other to create authentic knowledge products which reflect their true understanding, perceptions, and mastery of the subject being studied. Devise assessments and have students help devise assessments for themselves which cannot be faked. A worksheet or a study guide will not suffice. Invite your students to help. Focus on inviting students to create and share their knowledge with each other using digital tools when it is appropriate. Measure the success of your lesson based on the conversations students have spontaneously inside and outside of class about their project and the numbers of questions students ask and strive to answer and the amount of higher level thinking reflected in the knowledge products they make together. Give your students more choices. Provide differentiated opportunities for them to learn, express, create, and share their ideas. Stop trying to enthrall your students and instead strive to engage them. I think you'll find that process much more rewarding and attainable than the ridiculous educational goal of trying to enthrall your students all day long.